you know what? Life is a total and complete hot mess right now. So we're just gonna be calm and take it easy today with a book tag. <laughs> besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are going to do the contradictions book tag. Now, first, I would like the record to reflect that I actually took the time to curl my hair and it was looking super cute. But then I had to go and stand outside for about 20 minutes while roadside assistance changed the flat tire on my car. And I came in and instantly gone. Instantly, it looks like no curl whatsoever happened. So I would just like you to know that I took the time for you to curl my hair today. And this is what we're left with. I would also like the record to reflect that it has been extremely dark and gloomy for the past couple of days with like nonstop rain. And so if the lighting in my video today looks a little bit dark, that is why. So like I said, a hot mess, the hair, the lighting, the tire, it's all a reflection about how life has kind of been going for me lately. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos, but August was an extremely challenging time for me. I am still not fully recovered from how crazy stressful August was for me. It was just a constant state of overwhelm and overload and burnout. Things are are kind of leveling out just a little bit, but only temporarily. We surpassed the very busy season at my job and I'm now coming towards the end of my grad course. I only have two major assignments to turn in and hopefully I can pluck up the will to get them done. But there are other things going on as well, just because my husband just had surgery yesterday. So we had to deal with that. And then we are also going to be going into yet another busy season at my job. And I have just inherited about 440 students temporarily because we recently lost a member of my team. So while I work on hiring a replacement, I will be taking on the responsibility of those students. So we are transitioning from one busy period into another, but while I have a little bit more downtime, I'm trying to get caught up on things. However, all that kind of means that my content for September is looking a little bit differently than I originally expected. I originally expected at least two videos this month to be Slayer Fest vlogs, and that is just not going to happen. I am just not going to be remembering to pick up my camera during the month of September. So if anybody is interested, I might do just like a kind of sit down chit chatty, maybe tell all video about planning for Slayer Fest and behind Behind the scenes and all of that stuff. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I will definitely wrap up all of the books that I've read for Slayer Fest. So you will still get some of that content. It just will not be in vlog form. However, because I'm not doing those vlogs, there is a content gap for me and I needed to figure out some videos to film. And that's where this tag video kind of came in. But also I needed something quick and easy to film because I'm going to be posting the vlog that I did for the project I'm doing with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand and vlogs take me forever to edit. So that is why we are here doing the contradictions book tag. But also, after discovering this tag, I thought it would be fun to make this a yearly tag on my channel as well, because what I've challenged myself to do here is to answer the questions only with books that I've read for the year. So now that I've been rambling for about five minutes about absolutely everything else but this book tag, let's go ahead and get into the contradictions book tag, which by the way, was originally created by Daniela at only if for a page. Question number one is, I love this genre, but I didn't love this book. And I actually have several examples that I could have used to answer this question. However, I think I'm going to go ahead and answer with one of my most disappointing reads so far this year, and that is The Last One by Will Dean. I have read Will Dean's two other releases, and I really, really enjoyed them. So I went into The Last One with extremely high expectations, and it let me down tremendously. This follows our main character, who is going on a cross-Atlantic journey via the ship with her boyfriend at the time. And one day she wakes up on the ship, and she finds herself alone. Not only is her boyfriend not there with her, but there's pretty much no one else on the ship. She eventually comes in contact with a handful of other people who are also left on their own, and they're trying to figure out what is going on. And they're also trying to survive because they find themselves like cut off from all of the food and stuff. And right off the bat, that kind of seems like something I would absolutely love. It's definitely kind of like a different take on an isolation thriller. They're trapped somewhere, they can't get out, they have to survive. But ultimately the reasoning behind why they were trapped, I just didn't vibe with. I really didn't connect with any of the characters. I found the main character a little bit obnoxious because she kept going back to the specific time in her past with her father. And I guess he was like a gambler and he ruined so many people's lives. And she kept relating her current experience on this ship with what her dad went through. And I was like, this makes no sense. And this is not helping me connect with you. So I didn't necessarily know why she kept harkening back to this time with her dad. It was like really jarring. and It really took me out of the story. I didn't really care for any of the other characters as well. And you didn't get any of their perspectives. So there was definitely no opportunity to really connect with them. You were seeing everything from our main character's eyes. And I felt like that was a very lost opportunity with this book. And like I said, I really just didn't connect with the overall reason for why they were all there trying to survive. So I think I gave this like a two, two 
2.5 stars. Will Dean has a new release that just came out called The Chamber and I will be reading that one and I do have high hopes for that. It's kind of like a locked room mystery but if that doesn't work for me unfortunately I think I'm gonna go ahead and have to say goodbye to Will Dean just because I really did not like the last one. Question number two is I rarely read this genre but I loved this book and I actually have two for this that I want to spotlight and they are both within the genre of science fiction. I do not consider myself a science fiction girly at all. It's not really something that I gravitate towards and for the most part a lot of like the plot lines and tropes in science fiction just don't work for me but I had two science fiction books that absolutely knocked it out of the park for me so I wanted to go ahead and give them some love. Of course we have Ready Player One by Ernest Cline which is definitely one of the top books that I've read so far this year. I am obviously very very late to the game on this one to nobody's surprise. This is not something that I ever would have picked up on my own however it was one of y'all's recommendations and so as part of the read like my subscribers challenge I read this and I absolutely adored it. I listened to it and this was narrated by Will Wheaton and I feel like that just added to the overall experience and I just thought this was so well written. It was so clever. It was engaging. It was compelling. It was fast paced and you're just really rooting for our main character. You want him to ultimately find the Easter egg and win and get him and his family out of the hardships that they are experiencing. So I loved this from start to finish. It was honestly the biggest surprise five stars that I could have ever had. So I could not answer this question with any other book but this one. I also want to spotlight Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I read The Martian by Andy Weir last year and I thought it was fine but it wasn't as remarkable to me as everybody else seemed to think it was. But I had heard amazing things about this one. I went into it a little bit cautiously but I love this one as well and I will say that I think a good part of that was because of the audiobook. The narrator for this audiobook was absolutely phenomenal and if you plan on reading this I highly encourage you to listen to it or at least immersively read this because he was like a full cast all on his own. He did such an amazing job and I don't think my reading experience of this would have been the same if it had not been for him. So this follows our main character Dr. Ryland Grace and at the start of the story he is waking up and he has no idea who he is, what is happening, or why he is where he is, which is in a spaceship in the middle of space and the people around him are all dead. And so you're following him as he's getting his memories back and he realizes that he is essentially on a mission to save Earth. And so you're following all about why Earth is in peril, why Ryland Grace is on this mission. And then he encounters an alien race. He encounters a dude that he names Rocky. And Rocky is also on a mission to save his own planet from the same thing that is about to kill Earth. So you're following Ryland and Rocky as they're both trying to save their planets and they're working together to do this. And it was so incredibly smart and clever because they essentially have to find a way to communicate with each other and the way that they did that was just mind-boggling. I do not know how Andy Weir comes up with this stuff but he is an absolute genius. Even if you are not a sci-fi person I highly recommend giving this one a shot especially via audio because I loved the heck out of this one. Question number three. I love this trope but I didn't love this book. So my answer for this is not necessarily based around a trope that I like but more about a plot line that I typically like and the book in question is Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. So outwardly I feel like this book should have ticked a lot of my boxes. It is very hard hitting. It is very character driven. It has a lot of complex family dynamics. It is about three or four sisters I can't remember off the top of my head but it's about their life and what happens when a specific man joins their family and all of the stuff that they go through and there's loss and there's betrayal and there's secrets and all of that stuff. So this really is something that I should have enjoyed but I just didn't. I found the execution of this book to be very very lacking. I didn't like or connect with any of the characters in this story and by the time it was done I was just ready for it to be done. You all know that I'm a very character driven reader. I really love those complex family dynamics and especially examining sibling relationships. I don't know why I connect to those so heavily considering I don't have any siblings myself nor did I ever really want any siblings myself but I always focus on those dynamics and there was I don't know there was just something about this story that absolutely did not work for me. Ultimately it just kind of ended up being a slog to get through. I actually had DNF'd this book once before. I had tried it I think a year prior gotten through a couple of chapters and just realized I just wasn't vibing with it and then it became a pick in the book club that I run over on Goodreads and I was like okay well I'm gonna go ahead and have to give it a shot and luckily I did enjoy it to the point where I was able to finish the story. It wasn't necessarily anything super egregiously terrible. It just wasn't anything that was working for me in the way that I wanted it to work for me. So sadly Hella Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. Question number four is I hate this trope but I loved this book and for this I'm gonna go with The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. So I have recently learned about myself that I absolutely hate romances that feature the rock star trope just because I don't find it very believable and I certainly don't find it relatable. So I really feel like these books are supposed to be wish fulfillment but in typical Abby Jimenez fashion she was really able to make this story work for me. Now this book was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I definitely had some complications with this but overall I still really loved the characters in here. I rooted for their relationship heavily and as per usual Abby Jimenez really does those harder hitting elements really really well. So I was very much wanting to see these characters come together. I got a little bit teary-eyed, a little bit emotional. So this is definitely one that I feel like did it for the most part as good 
as it possibly could be done for me. Like I said, it wasn't perfect, but I still really, really enjoyed this story. Question number five. I love this author, but I didn't like this book. This is another one that I definitely had a few options for. I mean, the last one by Will Dean would satisfy this. I also recently talked about House of Glass by Sarah Buchanan, but I think for this, I'm going to answer only if you're lucky by Stacey Willingham. I enjoyed A Flicker in the Dark, but I absolutely adored all the dangerous things by her. So by this point, when this one came out, I was totally trusting her to handle this one well. And unfortunately, I just don't think she did. First of all, her other two books are very different in the fact that they feature older main characters. Like they feature characters that are in their late 20s, early 30s. And this is very much college students in their early 20s. And I wasn't expecting that going in. Like I was expecting older characters maybe reflecting on things that happened in college that are coming to bite them in the present. You know what I mean? But that's not what this was. This follows our main character who is entering college and she has just lost her best friend. She's gone through a very traumatic time. So she kind of spends her freshman year wallowing in that. And then as she's entering her sophomore year, she gets sucked into the orbit of Lucy, who is this very magnetic, charismatic person. So our main character gets tied up with Lucy and her friendship group. She ends up moving in with them and all kinds of shenanigans ensue. And then one day Lucy ends up going missing. So you're following our main character as she's getting wrapped up with Lucy. And then you're following them, I think less than a year later after Lucy has gone missing. So there really wasn't very much differentiation between the past and the present timelines in this. And I really don't feel like much happened in the story for the vast majority of it, except it was basically just them partying and acting like normal college students. And essentially the characters were not all that likable. I really didn't care about what happened to them. I didn't really care about what was happening overall in the story. And I really didn't understand how our main character, who was supposedly a very bright individual, just let herself get caught up with Lucy. Like how was she so magnetic that you just couldn't help be pulled into her orbit and you were starting to make all of these really terrible decisions. There was just something really poor about the execution of the story in my opinion. Now I did kind of enjoy how the book ended. I did feel like for the most part everything kind of tied up really nicely and there was a final reveal that I appreciated but unfortunately it was not enough to save this book. So I think this one got like a 2.5 stars for me. Unfortunately this one was a dud. Question number six. I previously disliked a book by this author but I loved this book. Now this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler for that Mission Impossible project that I'm doing where I'm trying to find my next favorite romance book or romance author and the very first book that I actually read for that project was All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. Now Mariana Zapata and I do not have a good history. I fully read one book by her. It was Rhythm, Chord, and Malakin or something like that and I hated that book. I gave it like a two stars. It was absolutely not my taste whatsoever and I've also DNF'd one of her stories and I realized that one of the reasons why I don't necessarily connect with Mariana Zapata is she has a very casual writing style. So her writing style doesn't necessarily work for me but I've heard everybody say that Mariana Zapata she's the queen of slow burn. If you want slow burn you need to read Mariana Zapata. So I went ahead and gave her a third chance and I read All Roads Lead Here and that is not a small book y'all. That is about a 600 page contemporary romance and I had a great time with it. I enjoyed that book almost from start to finish. Could it have been shortened? Probably but for the most part I didn't really feel like much of it was wasted. I didn't feel like it dragged out. There are definitely longer contemporaries that I feel should be shortened in order to heighten the reading experience but I didn't necessarily feel that. This was certainly kind of like a grumpy sunshine romance. Not necessarily hate to love but definitely the grump is a little bit skeptical about our main character's appearance in his life and so he takes a while to warm up to her and so you're definitely just following that dynamic and I thought it was very sweet and heartwarming and it was just a really pleasant overall experience. I will certainly be reading more Mariana Zapata in the future and hopefully she could become a staple romance author for me. Question number seven is I love this cover but I didn't love this book and for that I think I'm gonna go with The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. I actually just recently read this. I think it was last month and unfortunately this was kind of a disappointment. I really didn't necessarily have very many expectations going into this. I got this as part of Fairy Loot's adult book only box and of course I mean it's absolutely stunning and look at those sprayed edges y'all. And I just really didn't vibe with this. I really didn't connect with the characters or the storyline overall. I would say my favorite thing about this was how unabashedly queer this book was. This is just kind of like a queer normative society where you're queer and nobody bats an eye. Nobody questions it. It's completely normal for somebody to be queer and it's also completely normal for somebody to be with a guy one minute and a girl the next. Nobody cares about it. And so there was supposed to be a wonderful sapphic romance in here and I just I didn't care about it at all because I felt like it happened really really fast. It happens between our main character who is the honey witch in this. She is going to take the honey witch position from her grandmother who is passing away and she needs to kind of pass on the title of honey witch. So you're following our main character Marigold's journey as she learns that she's going to be the next honey witch and she goes through some training and preparation and she goes to the island where her grandmother lives and she starts meeting the people and then she meets Lottie Burke who is a big skeptic. She does not believe that magic exists. So Lottie is pretty terrible to Marigold in the beginning but then there's like the sudden attraction and Lottie completely warms up to Marigold and I don't know it just happened really quickly. I didn't care about the overarching plot of the story. This is very much more on the soft cozy fantasy side 
and we all know that that doesn't necessarily work for me too terribly often. So I gave this a shot because it did come in the adult fairy loot. I'm glad that I did and I will probably be keeping this just because of how stunning it is but unfortunately this did not work for me the way that I wanted it to. And then the final question is I didn't like this cover but I loved this book and I struggled with this one a little bit because I don't necessarily pay too terribly much attention to covers. I completely base it on the synopsis and the book that I chose I'm actually a little bit hesitant to choose it because I had a lot of problems with it despite how much I enjoyed it. And that is The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picoult. Now this is a book that I wrote an extremely lengthy review about on Goodreads because I had a lot of feelings and this book is not going to be for everybody. I completely acknowledge that because there is cheating in here. This follows our main character Dawn. She is on a plane to go somewhere and there's some problems with the plane and they kind of have to make an emergency landing and it makes Dawn kind of reevaluate her life. And so when the airline offers to send her wherever she wants to go, she decides to go to Egypt. Now Dawn in a former life was a budding Egyptologist. She was going for her doctorate in Egyptology. She was working in Egypt and she was falling in love with Wyatt who was her peer and colleague at the time. And then something unexpected happened and she had to go back to the States to care for her mom. I believe it was her mom was sick. And while she was there, she meets her now husband and she gets pregnant with him and they end up together and they end up getting married. She never returns to Egypt. She never returns to Wyatt. And this almost kind of near death experience makes her reevaluate her life and her life choices. So instead of going home to her husband and child, she goes to Egypt to see Wyatt. So it's a little bit sliding doors in that way and that she's at a crossroads and she can choose one path or another and she definitely chooses to go see Wyatt. And so you're following her as she shows up back in Egypt unexpectedly. Wyatt of course is absolutely alarmed to see her. And so this book was so 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 messy but I absolutely lived for the drama in this story. And I felt like Jodi Bacot for the most part handled everything very well and it absolutely made you think about what you would do if you were faced with this type of situation. So like I said this book is 100% not going to be for everyone. I was very very frustrated with our main character for a good portion of this book and perhaps the most infuriating thing about this book and this is going to be kind of a spoiler there is a complete open ending but because of all of the emotions that this book gave me the frustration the anger all of it I couldn't rate this book any less than a four stars the characters are so vivid in my mind and everything that happened and as per usual with Jodi Picoult it was very well written it was very well researched and it was just pleasurable reading experience overall and then question number nine is to tag some people and this tag has been around for about three years now so it's on the older side so I'm sure a lot of people have already done it I'm not going to tag anybody specifically but I'm just going to throw out in general if you would like to do this tag and you haven't already please do and please let me know when you do so I can go and check out your video. All right and that is it those are my answers to the contradictions book tag. I would love to hear your answers to some of these questions so what is maybe a trope that you love but a book that you didn't love with that trope or vice versa or maybe tell me a book that you've read by an author you disliked in the past but that really worked for you this time around or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me that shoulder shrug emoji in honor of I just have no idea what is happening around here anymore. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those featured videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in this video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.